Hey guys, and welcome to the spoiler review of Dragon Ball Super Broly. I just came back from watching the movie like 20 minutes ago, so let's get started. So the movie starts with a flash back into the past, where we see King Cold land on planet Vegeta. He announces to the Saiyans that he's retiring and now his son Frieza will be taking over. Now here's something that I didn't know before. I originally thought that Frieza was running the Saiyans for the longest time. It turns out King Cold was in charge of them. Frieza only ruled over the Saiyans for about five years. After the pleasantries, King Vegeta goes and checks up on his son Vegeta, who we find out is Vegeta the Fourth. King Vegeta stares at his son's power level, is crazy proud, and thinks he's gonna be the best Saiyan ever. He sees Brawly's pod next to Vegeta's. And his power level is way, way higher than his son's. King Vegeta exiles baby Brawly to the plant Bamba. Paracus finds out and he's not happy. He and this other guy, Beats, follow Brawly to the plant Bamba. Now, I didn't say this in my spoiler for you review because I wanted to keep him a secret. Another one of my favorite characters is Beats. There's something about a Joe Schmo Saiyan who's just a guy. Paragus and Beats find out they're pretty much stuck on Planet Vapa. So Paragus is all, one last mouth to feed. Boom, he blows him away. R.I.P. Beats, you are my favorite Saiyan working stiff. Paragus then vows, soon we will have our revenge. After that, Paragus becomes just the worst stage mom ever. Five years pass and we see Bardock in all his Dragon Ball minus glory. He's getting the suspicion like, hmm, I think Frieza might kill us all. Like most people, I'm not the biggest fan of Dragon Ball Minus, but because the other Saiyans are fleshed out, Bardock being a little tamer, it works for the film. So when Bardock and Gine are sending baby Kakarot to Earth, the music is swelling, it's all very emotional. Shout out to the composer, Norihito Sumitomo. The music in this film is on point. So we get Frieza blowing away Planet Vegeta with Bardock doing an epic one last stand, only to fail anyway. We fast forward to present day, we see Goku and Vegeta doing your thing. Now, I'm sure you've noticed that I've barely talked about Goku and Vegeta so far. I didn't even mention them in the spoiler free review. It's because they aren't the main characters. The main characters is Brawly and Paragus. So Goku and Vegeta are doing their day-to-day -day training. Bulma finds out on her Apple Watch that someone has stolen the Dragon Balls. The person who did it was none other than Frieza. Now one of the funniest things about this movie is the double joke of why Bulma and Frieza want the Dragon Balls. Bulma wants the Dragon Balls so she can look five years younger. Frieza wants the Dragon Balls to look five centimeters taller. Frieza is full-blown petty in this movie, and it is hilarious. We're then introduced to two members of the Frieza Force, Chi-Lai and Limo. Limo being this grizzled, oh, I'm too old for this pilot, and Chi-Lai being the spunky, fan service uh, character. They come across Plant Vampa where we see Paragus, and then we see Broly, and he's jacked, and he looks like Tarzan, and he's all man of the wild. And Chile is all, oh, I do declare. Chile and Limo pick up Paragus and Broly, taking the freeze, and freeze is all, wow, sweet, sayings of my own. Let's do Operation Payback. Broly and Chile are getting closer, and we get this very sweet, fascinating story about how when Broly was a kid, he was friends with one of the wild animals on Planet Vampa, but Paragus, being the stage mom, shoots off the animal's ear and says, they're for fighting, not for playing. So now Broly wears the ear as a sash to always remember that he had a friend. It's actually a very touching story that makes him way more complicated than the previous version. Later on, we find out that the source of Brawly's power is that he can internalize the Great Ape form while still keeping his human form. So in other words, this is Toriyama's version of Super Saiyan 4. We even find out that in order to keep Brawly under control, he has this shock collar that just electrifies Brawly in this horrific way. Chile then steals the shock collar remote control from Paragus and breaks it. The things we do for love. I'm not saying that Paragus is a good guy. He is clearly the worst stage mom ever. 
But I get how he got to this place, so it's awful, but I understand him. Paragus is kind of like Dragon Ball's version of Killmonger. Now, the moment we've all been waiting for. Frieza lands on Earth to meet Goku and Vegeta, and Paragus and Broly are with them. Paragus sees the Saiyans and goes, Broly, sick him! The next three minutes is an epic, mind-bending experience. So Broly's going at Vegeta, and Vegeta's doing his best Mayweather impersonation, just knocking out Broly. But Broly is not having this loss, so his power gets stronger and maximum -er. At this point, Broly is no selling all of Vegeta's attacks. None of them are doing any damage. Goku then calls out to Brawl and he's like, Alright, tag in. It's my turn. They throw down and the fight shifts to Broly's POV of him fighting Goku, throwing him through mountains, dodging Kamehamehas. It is one of the craziest shots I have ever seen in anime, let alone Dragon Ball history. Eventually, Goku goes Super Saiyan God and does this cool bind technique. Broly's not having it and he does what Hulk does to Loki just starts throwing him over and over. And it's, it's pretty, it's pretty graphic. Eventually, Goku goes Super Saiyan Blue, and then the fight gets even crazier. They start fighting this volcano, and all of a sudden it explodes and wipes out all of the ice. The terrain has now become a literal hellscape. Goku's now starting to get the edge on Broly. Frieza, who's been doing color commentary this entire fight sequence, is all, mm, I think Broly can do better. We see this brief flashback of Krillin being killed by Frieza, his only cameo in this movie, and boom, he shoots Paragus and kills him! Then Frieza does an Oscar-winning performance. Broly, how tragic! A random energy blast killed your father! Broly sees his dead stage mom dad and goes crazy. The music is swelling, everything goes crazy green, boom, he's a Super Saiyan. At this point, Vegeta's like, I better come and step in. All these blasts are going off, they try to fight Broly, no, they get wiped out. Knowing that they can't win, Goku does instant transmission to Piccolo right in front of Frieza. So now, um, Broly and Frieza are going at it. But this fight is done through montage, it's probably the funniest of the fights. It's pretty much Broly going, ah, 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 and Frieza going, ah, ah, ah. So Goku gets the idea, let's do the fusion dance and fuse. Vegeta's like, fine, whatever. They mess up twice. So if you know how the fusion dance works, we're in that form for 30 minutes. So Broly and Frieza have been going, ah, ah, ah. For an hour! Third time's the charm, they finally become Ken and Gogeta and go to face off with Broly. At this point, the film loses its mind. There's giant energy blasts being thrown left and right, there's explosions while the music's going. Oh, well, oh, well, oh, well, oh, well, oh, well. And then eventually, Broly and Gogeta shatter dimensions. We're fighting this psychedelic purple room. They just keep throwing down. There's a scene where Gogeta is upside down while trying to punch Broly. And then Broly, of course, gets even maximer. It goes crazy green. Gogeta goes Super Saiyan blue. And they get back into reality somehow. I don't know. And they just keep throwing down and fighting. Now Gogeta is clearly starting to win the fight. So she lays off. My Tarzan! We have to save my Tarzan! She and Limo get the Dragon Balls, and right before Gogeta does his Kamehameha kill, she wishes on the dragon to send Broly back to Planet Vampa before he's killed. Freezes off, I'll get you next time, Saiyans! Next time! And he goes off. A couple of days pass, and she and Limo are now with Broly and Planet Vampa. Goku shows up, and he's like, wow, man, I thought I was the new hotness, but no, it turns out no! You're the new hotness. Can I come around and spar once in a while? Oh, here's a bag of goodies. And Goku does a fan surfacey moment where he's like, I'm Goku, but you can call me Kakarot. He teleports away, movie's over. This movie shocked me in the most wonderful sorts of ways. As a longtime Dragon Ball fan who was tired of Saiyans stealing the screen time, who was not a Brawly fan, who was not a Dragon Ball Minus fan. This movie was able to take all those things I didn't like, 
rearrange them, and make it work. This movie made the Saints more than just angry barbarians. They had a culture and a lifestyle of their own. Seeing the Saints' dimensions makes Dragon Ball Minus a better story, in my opinion. This film made Broly more than just a plot device of power. He was a kind, sensitive soul who was burdened by a domineering father and incredible Hulk issues. This film had dynamic action, laugh out loud comedy, villains with clear motivations and dimensions. It even had a touch of romance. It is a must see for all Dragon Ball fans. So what did you think of Dragon Ball Super? What were your favorite parts? What were things that you didn't like about it? Which fight was your favorite? Let me know in the comments. Till next time, stay frosty.